All right, well, coming back to this same snippet in the end of La Campanella. And last time when I finally figured out what my problem is, I decided to do all, all I could to improve that one problem. And the one problem was me not hitting this particular D sharp, oh, highlighted in some sort of red or pink. And uh, so my, my approach is to go right to, that, to the source of the problem. So I'm going to block out everything else. And you see that I have my, my left hand there about to go down here. So, and my, I guess, right hand has to play that A sharp and then go back to the B natural based chord later. So, let me put that in. Okay, so in fact, I'll reduce my goal to just this. Yeah, my left hand is already in position here with one three. That's the, th those are the fingers I decided. One three, one five, one three, one five. I think some people just maybe use one five or one four all the time, but I find this combination is nice. Anyway, so um, I'm down here in position and I'm striking the A sharp with the right hand and um, then resetting, just like that. My torso is probably centered right here in the usual central position. All right, so once this goal has been established, I do move back and I'm going to move back like this. I'm going to go ahead and um, hold down these notes. So that's why I have them kind of half covered up in the, in the proper position where I would be striking them. And now I've kind of pressed that pause button that I was talking about in the previous part. And my fourth finger is sort of ready to strike that A sharp. I'm about to do this leap down in my left hand. Yeah, so you could see a lot of hesitation. One more time. I'll actually close my eyes. One of the things that's going to be important as I play this is to keep my mind focused on a lot of things, but also on the awareness of the spacing between this D sharp and the fact that the bottom finger is related to that G sharp right here through these sorts of distances that I use my fingers to feel. And so the ability to bring my thumb back to this G sharp will probably become better as I integrate more and more of the left hand pattern into the practice segments. But for right now, I just have to do the best I can. So I'm here and then I have to do that, you know, as perfectly as I can. Boom. Now I'm trying to align my thumb with the keys. So it's parallel to the keys, whereas the long fingers are kind of pointing at this 10 o'clock or whatever angle. And, and I think that's the best way. It's still very hard, but at least gives me a chance. Okay, so this one. Oh, I'm actually supposed to play that. <laughs> Close the eyes. Okay, I think I have this. I, I think I can hold this chord down and play the rest of it. Now I will actually strike this chord. One more time. Overshot. Yeah, and I could keep feeling like that should be my focus, this distance. There it is. So in general, with this kind of focused practice, backward step in, so goal-oriented backward step in practice, 
gobs. Um, I find that figuring out the one thing to focus on at a time is probably the most important aspect because then you can bring your brain power to solve it at the expense of everything else. But there's always going to be the worst offender, if you like. And so let's say I'm consistently missing that leap in my left hand. Well, let's just assume that that is the worst offender because you know, hitting some bass note is, is going to be pretty obvious to the listener. So um, that, that should be my focus. And until I feel I can do it without much thinking, I'll, I'll keep working on it. By the way, I think I talked about it last time. I try not to use too much pedal when I practice and in general I try to play quieter just to protect my ears or neighbor's ears. So, nice thing about this piano, I can actually do this. <laughs> now it's, it's, it's got a silencer and it's just a quiet, uh, you know, electronic sound, but obviously real Yamaha sound is quite nice. Okay, so I've established I can do this. Great. I think it's going much better than it did last time anyway. All right, so here. Got this G-sharp octave that I'm holding down right now. I'm already in position to play the, the right hand and I'm going to do nothing but what I just did, except I'm going to start from this point for my left hand. And that's beautiful because immediately I can hear how I'm not hitting that D sharp properly. So focusing on nothing but that. Okay, so now I was overzealous. I hit it <laughs> with a lot of enthusiasm. Okay, now it's fine. This is not a quiet place in the piece, but uh, for precision strikes, you really want to reduce your enthusiasm a little bit when you practice. Okay, I think this is good. So now I will advance like this, meaning I'm actually going to strike it. And I'm actually going to start a little bit bef with my first finger not quite on top of that G sharp, because I'm trying to imitate what's going to happen as I play this at full speed, right? I'm going to be constantly moving up and then quickly down. Luckily, it gives me a little extra time to move down, but still, it's going to be this constant going up. And so when I play this note and then I'm ready to play the G sharp, but my thumb is not quite ready to play this G sharp. So I'm going to imitate that condition, right? Imitate that position. Again, my, my right hand should be in place. All right, so this way, as I start to play, I'm having to force my thumb over to the G sharp as I sideswipe it and I keep going on to that top D, D sharp octave. Ooh, forgot to play that A sharp. One more time. It's not too bad. What, what's going on here, I don't know. But again, my focus right now is just the, the left hand. So if this doesn't work out, no big deal because I'm trying to solve one thing at a time. Okay, that was better. All right, and so on and so forth. Let's see how many more we can do in this session. All right, so here I'm going to start on this position. It's like I just played those half covered up octaves and I'm in this paused state. I'm thinking about what's going to happen. Well, I'm, I'm going to try to get to this position and then the rest of it I've already practiced. So it's not a very hard addition, but we'll see. Okay, except I didn't quite have enough focus to, a, to hit this A sharp. So let's focus on that now, since everything else seemed to be okay. Well, 
now I hit that, but screwed up on my left hand. Okay, now refocus on the left hand. Wrong fingers. Now everything seemed to be better. Anyway, so on and so on. I'll leave it aside for right now and then come back to it another time. Again, I'm very curious if you also study or have studied this piece. What is your left hand fingering for those octaves? Quite, quite curious to find out.